Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to take our first steps to making a fully autonomous shader class. A shader class where we don't have to, well, make subclasses of it that do special modifications, like adding all the uniforms or deciding how all those uniforms need to be updated. And in this video specifically, we're going to be tackling the adding uniforms part we're going to make a function in our shader class that can add all the uniforms in a shader automatically. No need to manually call add uniform on every single one. So let's go ahead and get to it. I'm going to add a function right above add uniform. I'm going to call it public void add all uniforms. And it's going to take in a string I'm going to call shader text which is going to be the full text of the shader program. As sort of a result of this, that also means we're, that if we're going to use the add all uniforms function, we're not going to be able to use the add vertex shader from file, and add fragment shader from file, and add geometry shader from file, etc., etc., convenience functions, because we're going to actually need the text that load shader returns. So I'm going to use forward ambient as sort of my guinea pig shader. I'm going to start by having, well, a string, I'm going to call it shader text, and that's going to equal load shader, actually I call it, well, vertex shader text, because, well, there's two shaders, the vertex shader and the fragment shader, and the vertex shader text is going to be forward ambient.vs, and my fragment shader text is going to equal, well, load shader, whoop, <laughs> of forward ambient.fragment.fs and of course there's I can't use load shader because it's a member of well it's a private member of shader and I can't make that public because what well, well I can't make it public I can't make it public what am I saying <laughs> I can make it public just for the time being if I forget to change it back once I well get rid of all the stuff that needs it outside of the shader class let me know but I'm going to make it public just for the time being. And that also means I can replace the from file stuff with the non from file stuff. So vertex shader text and fragment shader text. There. And with all that, that should enable me to use the function add uniform, or add all uniforms, with both vertex shader text and fragment shader text. And I'll just add everything regardless of what the text says. Now, granted, that's not perfect. It's We still need to handle attributes, and we still need to update the uniforms. But that's a, a big step to being a little bit more general. So right now I'm going to comment this out. And I'm going to run, just to make sure I didn't break anything. I don't see how I could have possibly broken something. But, you know, just to be sure. Okay, good. Haven't broken anything. So now let's actually start using the add all uniforms functions which are or the add all uniforms function which is if I can there right here <laughs> now here's how I'm going to implement this I'm gonna have an int called uniform start location and this is just going to start off well before that what this variable is going to do it's going to hold something like, say, if this is my shader, something like right here, this position right here, before the line with the uniform in it. That's, that's what the uniform start location is supposed to be. It's where, well, it's where it starts off. And this is going to be equal to shader text dot index of, and I'm going to, going to be looking for the keyword of whatever the uniform keyword GLSL is. So I'm going to have some final string. I'm going to call it uniform keyword, and just to be 100% sure I'm not screwing anything up, I'm going to copy and paste this word directly out of some GLSL source code. And there. So I'm just going to look for the uniform keyword. And that's how it works. So, now I know wherever the very first uniform in the file is. And granted, there's probably more than one uniform in the file. So, rather than just stopping here, I'm going to do a while loop. 
it's going to be while uniform start location is not equal to negative 1. So, it, because if it's negative 1, that means it wasn't found. This also has the nice effect that if the shader has no uniforms for some reason, this function's just going to skip over everything and not do anything. So, that's good. And at the end of every iteration, I want to find wherever the next uniform is. So, go from, say, right, right here to right here. And here, I'm going to do that by, say, same sort of thing, shader.index of uniform keyword, starting at wherever the previous uniform star location was. And I'm going to also add to that the uniform keyword.length, just so that, it, you know, it doesn't start off and find, oh, hey, the next uniform's at the exact same position, you know? Just to prevent that from happening. So, you know, it actually does find the next one. And there. So, with all that, that should go through the entire list. Yeah, just, just want to make sure I'm actually using the function. But yeah, that should go through the entire list of all the uniforms. And, well, yeah, it should go through every uniform. Of course, now we just need to extract the name of every uniform and add that with our add uniform function down here. Now, at this point, there's a lot of different ways you could go about going in and actually extracting the name. I'm going to do it in a way that is also easy to extract the type. You know, this thing, whether it's a VEC3 or a sampler 2D or whatever. Because, spoiler alert, we're eventually going to need to know the type as well. So, yeah, just to make life a little easier for us down the road. So, I'm going to say have an int. I'm going to call it begin, because I'm not particularly creative and I don't know a better name I could give this, but yeah, this is going to be sort of the beginning of where we extract the, uh, what's it called? The, well, we'll type and the name, because we're going to try to extract both. And that's going to equal, well, actually it's going to equal what we have here. Oh, it's almost going to equal what we have here. Well, yeah, okay, it's going to equal what we have here for now. I'm going to keep them separated, just because I'm not entirely sure if I'm going... Yeah, okay, let me start that again. I said that way too fast. I'm not going to replace this with the begin variable, because I'm not sure yet if I'm going to keep the begin variable exactly as it is right here. In fact, for now, I'm going to start with the, this plus one, because this way it's going to take the start location, add the length of the uniform, and add one, which should give me the starting place of both the type and, well, the name. So there. Now I'm going to have end, end, cause, which is supposed to be the end of this. And this is going to be shader text dot index of something else. Yeah. And in this case, it's going to be the index of a semicolon. I'm going to look for a semicolon, because remember, this is code. What's the end of every line? A semicolon. And so I'm going to look for the semicolon, starting at, of course, the beginning place, because, well, it shouldn't be before there. And that should be good. So I have the beginning and the end, so now I'm going to have a string uniform line, which equals, yeah, shader text dot substring at begin and end. And there. Now I should have a line of text which contains something like this the type, and the name. Now, for now, I don't care about the type. I just want the name. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uniform line dot index of space. Or, okay, I can do something like just space. That works, too. And that should give me, well, well where this is going to take this location, plus 1. Because, remember, it starts me at the beginning, so that plus 1. And at that, I should have, well, a nice place to get the name. So I can say string uniform name equals, well, uniform line dot substring, because I want to take part of the string out, starting at well, this start location, and then ending 
at well uniform line dot length and that should be a nice and easy way of extracting the uniform name. It's probably not the easiest way to get just the name, but again, I want to make it fairly easy to extract the type later on. And at this point, I should be able to just say, well, add uniform, passing in the uniform name. And there. It should be that easy. So let's test it out. Let's see what forward ambient does. If we crash, if we don't, if everything magically works out on the first try somehow. And it does, apparently. So yeah, we've added all the uniforms on the first try somehow, and everything just works. So cool, now we should be able to extend it to forward directional and forward point and forward spot and all that. Wait, 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 wait a minute. It's not that easy. Y come on. You knew it wouldn't be that easy, didn't you? Because of this. The way GLSL says structs have to be de decomposed into uniforms. Because, well, if I have to... Well, I don't have anything open right now. But I have to do something like in lighting.glh where... Gee, this is a good example. Something like in spot.glh where having a uniform spotlight, well, it's just going to add spotlight. And that's no good. Yeah. This is why we're going to also need to know about the type. Because if it's not one of the standard GLSL types, then it's a struct, and then we're going to have to do some extra uniform processing with this. However, before we go ahead and do that, I want to add automatic attribute detection, so we don't have to manually set all the attributes. And that should be pretty easy. In fact, it's going to be almost identical to public void, or, you know, the add all uniforms function. So, I'll call this add all attributes. Or, maybe, eh, that's fine. I'm going to rename this to attribute keyword. And, just like before, I'm going to copy this directly out of GLSL to avoid the risk of typo here. And I'm going to replace it wherever I was using the uniform keyword. Now, unlike the uniform, however, I'm not going to need to parse out any type or anything, because, well, attribute is... Oh, wait, never mind. I, I forgot they do have a type. Never mind. <laughs> In that case, I can use even more of this code than I thought I could. I can... Well, for one, I can not use, name this uniform line. I can name this, say attribute line. Just sprinkle this around a bit, make it more appropriate for what's actually going on. Now sprinkle around attribute rather than uniform so it doesn't get too confusing. And attribute start location rather than uniform start location. And there. And now to actually add the attribute, I'm not going to add a uniform. In fact, I think I can use almost exactly the same code. So I'm going to say set attribute location with attribute name. And rather than zero, I'm going to have some int I'm going to call, I don't know, attrib number, which is going to start off equal to zero. And I'm just going to sort of count up. I'm going to add whatever it is then and then increment it. And honestly, I think that's all that's needed, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that and say add all attributes with vertex shader, because remember, the vertex shader is the only one that has attributes. And that should be good, honestly. What do you know? There you go. So we have automatic attribute addition in the shader. We're that much closer to being fully generic. In fact, I think the constructor at this point might be fully generic. Well, other than the struct thing. So, let's go ahead and let's handle that, so that we can hopefully start 
getting rid of the, some of the stuff that we have in our shader class right now. Well, in our shader children classes right now, namely the constructor. And as it turns out, adding structs automatically takes a little bit of effort and thinking. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. And in the next video, we're going to be doing some struct parsing. We're going to be parsing out structs, finding out types, components, all sorts of nonsense, and actually getting, well, actually getting this our system to support struct uniforms, spit out proper data for, well, when we're trying to add uniforms in a struct. So thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you then.